welcome to this uh, final workshop of the Piper project. Uh, a few words about the people that are here. Uh, it's a very, very nice audience. We're very happy with that. Uh, we haven't put your name, but we have put the names of your organizations. And uh, with, we have car manufacturers, uh, pretty much quite a few people in there. Uh, Otoli, Forestia, Takata, TRW. Uh, we have also CRS manufacturers. We have people that are doing software. We have research institutes and people that are working uh, for car manufacturers. And uh, we have a few people that came from very far away, uh, that came from the US actually. We have a couple. And uh, someone that participated in the project that comes from India. Um, we will distribute all the slides. So there is no need to take uh, pictures uh, of the screen. Um, most of you in here are users of finite element models for safety, and they have really, really, really improved. Um, they are right now, they are good. They pretty much capture the whole human response that is known uh, from a variety of sources. Uh, and a few years ago, we couldn't say it, but now I think we can say they are better than dummies. Uh, we have a few families that are available. Uh, typically corresponding to dummy sizes, and they could really be helpful for safety. Uh, using them, however, is a little bit different, and, uh, and we think they are underused considering their performance. Various reasons for that. Um, first, they are increasingly complex to uh, develop, validate, maintain. They require advanced biomechanical knowledge uh, also to use them. Uh, it's a large investment. Um, there is little academic return nowadays for uh, model development. The business model is not very clear either. So it's difficult to do that on your own. They are typically only in one posture, uh, the one you received it when you uh, got the file. Uh, and so then to move them to wherever they should be in your environment, because you're not selling humans uh, for the ones that are the industry here. Uh, you are selling cars, CRS, belts, airbags but you're not selling models. So to interact them with whatever you're selling, uh, it's not so easy. So uh, positioning is typically done with simulation approaches, and there is a concept of pre-crash, out of position, and so on and so forth. So how to deal with that? So right now it's simulation approaches. There is a limited population coverage, uh, meaning like mostly people targeted the same size as the dummies. And so, so they are digital, so we don't have the same limitations in theory that we have with the, uh, with the dummies. Uh, so we could have all kinds of size. We could have uh, people with a belly like me, or people that are actually very thin, or all kinds of people. And, uh, but we don't have them. So we have a few baselines, and then we hope to be able to scale them to uh, describe the rest of the population, if this can be done. And then the last thing that's important, which is that having models is not enough for use, uh, because there is also how do you specify them? How do you certify them if they are going to be certified one day? Uh, how reproducible are the processes with these? Uh, what are the procedures? Are there any and so on and so forth? And so uh, I just said to someone outside, dummies were modern, and they are still are modern, because if you think of the IP of the dummy shirt, there are some issues with our friends at Humanetics maybe but nobody is from Humanetics here today. So, um, but besides those issues, uh, they are open. You can get the blueprints. Uh, you get one, you, you give it to someone to do some testing. And uh, you get a human model, what do you do? Well, you lock it to make sure nobody else can look at it. And then for reproducibility, that's not so easy. Uh, for technical gaps, we've chose to work on tools to help positioning and scaling. And for baseline models, uh, we focused on the child model that is underrepresented. I'll come back on that later. Organizational gaps, uh, we think that whatever we do should be human body model agnostic and also solver agnostic and, uh, and open source. It's a choice. We will discuss it later today. It's our choice. We hope that you can share some of that. Um, and then Piper is a project where we decided that we should stop delivering reports. Uh, not that we don't like, and that our friends at the Commission don't like, don't need the reports. Uh, but we need to deliver whatever we did. So we are developing and delivering stuff, and, uh, and some of this will be in the USB key you will get tonight when you leave. It was a 42 month project ending next week. Uh, with 10 partners, with different experiences and backgrounds. So we have academic people all that we frame as academic here. We have some previous experience in FE coming back, coming from the FE world, working on positioning and personalization. We have automotive manufacturers, uh, French and German, through uh, lab and PDB. 
And, uh, and then we have institutions from other fields that we thought could bring stuff to the issues uh, that we are dealing with, whether it's for positioning, uh, whether it's for personalizing. So the structure of the project is in work packages, they are here. We have the biggest work package, and that's most of the effort you will see today, was about really developing tools and methodologies and checking numerical methods and things like that. Uh, another one was about predictors or how to drive this transformation and one was about uh, application. That's the only slide you will see today that's related to the structure of the project because we're not there about that, we're there about the deliverable. And, uh, and in reality, the project was a little more like this, uh, which is really a lot of people working, uh, working together. So, what we will talk about today, we will present or try to present you the main results, um, things that you could use, uh, and that you will leave with uh, for some of them tonight. Uh, and not focus on the project history, structure, things that didn't work, things like this. Um, what we'd like to do also is to present and discuss what about after the project, what are we going to do next, and, uh, and what we hope that you will participate, and gather some feedback about that. So forward, we know this effort is not isolated. There's been a lot of efforts, and there are still a lot of efforts around these uh, the themes around the world. And, uh, and it's not that we don't want to acknowledge uh, um, our you know, peers that are doing the same type of work, but we really want to focus today on this so there won't be much literature uh, uh, review in there. Uh, there are many people involved in Piper, so uh, you can see them. There is a little like, uh, uh, yellow stripe on my tag, and in here, everybody that's contributed to the project uh, directly uh, has a yellow tag. And uh, so you can talk to them. At the break, only a few uh, will actually uh, um, uh, uh, present, but uh, it's really a collective effort. For speakers, respect the timing. For the audience, please respect the timing. Uh, it's a pretty tight schedule. Uh, turn off your mobile phones if you didn't. There is no Wi-Fi, we're sorry about that. Uh, so important, you have noticed probably there are two cameras in the back. So uh, they will record the speakers and the slides. They will not record the audience. Uh, what we aim is to put the... Uh, I'm just saying that so that you can feel free when you ask for questions and things like that. Um, they will not record the audience, but we want to put these presentations on the, uh, on the internet because we had quite a few people that wanted to come, but that couldn't. Breaks and bathrooms are just outside. So that's our program for today. Okay, so we have four sessions. Uh, the first one here will be about child models, the second one about scaling, positioning, and then open source.